Italy might be the most famous country for food around the globe and in this episode it is Diana's and my first time in Italy's historic capital Rome and of course we want to find Rome's most iconic dishes. Oh, look at the mozzarella. On our food journey, we are currently going around the Mediterranean Sea on a cruise ship and in last week's episode, we got a first taste of Italian food in Palermo. Mmm, good so far. I'm so happy with Italian food. But after leaving Sicily, it is time to head north to experience the famous capital's authentic cuisine and culture. Oh yeah, and if you like religion, our tour guide dropped us off literally in the heart of Vatican City and this is what it looks like. So I'm pretty sure this is the entrance to Vatican City. This is like the uh, San Pietro Plaza. But this is basically where the center of the Catholic world is. Behind there, St. Peter's Dome in the back. And uh, that's where the Pope lives. Some event is happening at the Vatican City. And uh, there's an orchestra or a band, I guess. And Phil's dancing. He was dancing. It's either the Urukais come in, the Orcs, or the Crusaders. Definitely the orcs. This is a very impressive place, but even the most religious people have to eat at some point. And when in Rome, eat food. Let's go. Buongiorno. Before we head into the city center, we just stopped here quickly for a quick coffee break and a little bit of a dessert. Um, <laughs> but we're starting using that as breakfast. We're having panna cotta, which is very Italian dessert dish. However, first, when in Rome, you know, have a coffee, have a cappuccino. Really nice uh, yeah. cappuccino. They're known for the coffee culture. Same with like France, etc. I've got an espresso. It's awesome. It's like the kick of caffeine that you need to function, right? Am I right? And then quickly, the panna cotta, which is like this yogurt cream, right? It's yogurt. an Italian gelatin dessert. Wow, look at this. So you can get this with chocolate or caramel, but I think the classic is fruit. Yeah, well, and this sticks this together. Vanilla-y flavor. Mm. What do you think? I think in my head I might have confused it with ricotta cheese, <laughs> but panna cotta is actually this dessert. It's pretty small, but it's very heavy. As you can see, it's very hard yeah. to rip apart. You have this nice fruit glazing on top, which is really sweet, but doesn't taste too artificial. So it might be just pureed fruit in there and then a little bit of breadcrumbs or cookie biscuit crumbs on top. It's almost like a deconstructed fruit cake. I like it a lot, kind of refreshing. So I feel like panna cotta is like the second most famous dessert in Italy. We'll get to the first, the most famous one later in this video. Mm. Putting on the fruit on it makes it fresh. So maybe it makes this dessert count for breakfast. I mean, I'm just gonna eat my dessert for breakfast and then sprinkle it throughout the day. <laughs> yeah, it uh, has some vitamins too. Yeah, this is really nice. <laughs> After breakfast, we move deeper towards the city, not really knowing what will await us later. And we're just making our way in by foot to the city with a lot of other people. It's a shit ton of police presence right now. Uh, it might be because it's Rome, but also might be because it's uh, Day of the Virgin Mary or something. And uh, So this is another Catholic church and one of the first things you notice walking through the streets of Rome here is that there are a ton of church and right now the bells are ringing as well and I would assume yeah most of them probably are Catholic but they're pretty impressive and there must have been a lot of money over the centuries going in there. But we wanted to visit a highly recommended place for one of our newly found favorite Italian food items. And if you watched us eat our way through Palermo, you might know what we're talking about because these little balls are an absolute delight. The next stop is going to be a little snack. It's a street food stop. There was already a line waiting at this place before it even opened. It's called Suplizio and they have these little fried dough balls. So it's kind of like the Sicilian ones we had, uh, arancini, but these are suppli. Basically the Rome version of the arancini yeah, and the suppli. The, the rest of the, the country version. Let's open it up, see what's inside. Fried rice ball. Oh, look at the mozzarella. This one is supposed to have carne inside, mozzarella, parmesan. All right, Ooh. that's got a quite a nice cheese pull going on there. Wow. Oh my God, with rice, it's a rice ball. Cheese pull problems. 
Mm. Oh yeah. Holy smokes. That is cheesy. That is fresh. It has a really nice fresh tomato flavor to it. You can see the redness in there. This is, I think, one of the, my favorite street food snacks in general, like just a fried rice ball. It's amazing. Mm. Uh-huh. Yeah, a little hot, just bite. No, pull, <laughs> pull, pull, pull. pull. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh no. My God, that's messy. Mm. My hands are dirty. <laughs> Dude, these things are just awesome. The cheese pool is way better here in Rome. And that's not because of the cheese, it's because of the geographical location on Earth. Every cheese pool in Rome is just epic. Facts. This one is Cabanera, and Cabanera originated in Rome. Yes. So this should be the best soup, please. Oh, look at that mozzarella oh, cheese pool. Damn, what do you do with that? Oh, shit. Oh my God, I will cry. <laughs> so this one is way cheesier, as you can see and it breaks apart way more. Um, there's still the mozzarella in there, the cheese pool, but in between the rice, it's very saucy and cheesy as well. I like it, I think I prefer the classico actually, but this one's very good as well. Mm, that looks so good. It looks so unattractive eating this. <laughs> this is not that easy to eat. I can't help. <laughs> Oh my God, not an attractive dish. There's a nice fatty ham piece in there. It's very eggy, you can taste the egg Parmesan in there as well. It's not pasta based, which, you know, it's typical with carbonara. It's just like a carbonara rice ball. Very good. Yes, these cheese balls are apparently too much for us to handle. Enough of that. But damn, those soupli are just amazing. Aside from the many churches, Rome is full of piazzas with amazing sculptures and fountains. I like how at this plaza all these figurines are kind of like water themed. They're like entangled with like octopus or like other sea creatures. The original hentai. Yeah, the original hentai. It's a little, a little nice. sexual and I think they know what they were doing back in the day. Definitely some fantasies happening there. Every corner there seems to be buildings of some significance and so much police presence today. I've never felt so tall in my life. I don't know, except especially here in Italy and on our ship. I, I've been all over Asia and I feel very tall here and I'm only like 172, 173. Yep, same here. I think the aesthetics of the buildings are definitely parts that are so beautiful. Like you have the older architecture mixed in there and the buildings aren't too high. I think every building is like maximum five stories and unless you have one of these museums or something. Yeah, and yeah. every two blocks has a huge church. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The closer we've gotten to the main attractions, the busier it was. We passed the famous Pantheon, an almost 2,000 year old building. Lots of narrow pathways, alleys is the word I can think of. This behind us, again, it just pops up like these huge buildings and this is the Chiesa di Sant Ignazio di Loyola, another Catholic church. I feel like if you're into Catholic churches, but it has to have to be Catholic churches, then Rome is the place to be. The Trevi Fountain had to be the most beautiful sculpture that we wanted to immediately get away from because of the zombie-like concert crowd of people surrounding it. Over-tourism was never more apparent to us and can definitely ruin the flair of some places. It was time for our main meal of the day and real Italian food. Ironically, it turned out to be quite hard to get Italian food in the center of Rome at lunch hours. All right, we're having a little bit of a change of plans right now. Our plan was to get something in the city center, a restaurant lunch, something nice, sit down Italian. And uh, we just went around that fountain area, the Pantheon area, and it's just a madhouse. I originally wanted to see the Colosseum, which is further down there, but we decided to leave this area because it's just not working for us. 
it just crowds and crowds of people. All the restaurants are overflown um, and it's just noon right now, it, which is just crazy. So for the sake of this video, we're just leaving this area and for the sake of our sanity as well, and we're just gonna go over hopefully out a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, I feel like here's a lot of like tourist restaurants and stuff and they're all overflowing. So maybe we'll find something over there. Yeah, so we're getting out of here and uh, searching for something over there. So we just went through this whole quarter looking for a restaurant that has pizza and pasta and it's really hard to find. There's a lot of higher scale restaurants that just have pasta and seafood and stuff but no pizza and uh, all the pizza, the ones that had pizza are just popping and you cannot get a table only with waiting lines. So it's very interesting, we're kind of having issue right now to find a place to eat a pizza in Rome and it becomes quite the schnitzel hunt right now or as they probably call it here a pizza hunt. Yeah. A 20 minute walk later we found a table and it was finally time to try Italy's most famous dishes. We made it out of the madness that is the inner city with all the sightseeing spots and we found a place where we could order pizza finally. This place is called the Jazz Cafe but it had good ratings and we hope this is good pizza. We got this one here. This is called the Pizza Primavera and the waiter recommended this. We asked which one is the most Rome one, but then he said this one is the favorite one. So this one has the dough. Then there's actually no tomato sauce or cheese on there, but just rocket salad, buffalo cheese, then Parma ham and cherry tomatoes. So very interesting, not the typical tomato and cheese variation. This is my first ever pizza in Rome and I have nothing but the highest expectations because <laughs> everybody references this all the time. Original Italian pizza, if not pizza from Rome or maybe Napoli, but let's just see this one. It's a very interesting variation. Put Here it in your mouth. Oh my God. Very different. I never ate a pizza like this. What strikes me first is these big chunks of the buffalo yeah, cheese. Those look awesome. They have a brick style oven in there. So I'm thinking they're making all of this fresh dough right there and then they put these toppings on it. And uh, it sounds a little more like a flatbread or a crunchy. Is it crunchier? Mm. Mm -hmm. So we have this flatbread here, which is nicely seasoned. I think this is thyme, right? And then uh, there's no cheese or sauce on it. Then the Parma ham here is very tasty, very fatty, which is very nice. Rocket salad and the cherry tomatoes. And of course- That beautiful cheese right that there. That beautiful cheese. I think this is the highlight of this thing together with the Parma ham. And um, overall, this is actually not dry at all. Its ingredients are all top-notch good. This is just a very unique pizza experience to me. Not like any other pizza I had before. Wow, that's the way of eating it. Mm. Like a cow. <laughs> this is more of like a bread with toppings. It's nice. Exactly. I think what we're trying to say is this tastes really good. It just doesn't taste like the pizza that our simple taste buds are used to. I'm just missing the tomato sauce and the cheese a little bit. I have here the carbonara which originated in Rome, Italy, apparently. <laughs> I think it's one of the classic pasta dishes that you can get. It's these long pasta noodles and then you have parmigiano Reggiano cheese and then you have eggs in here and bacon pieces that's kind of how you make the sauce and you can see the freshly crushed black pepper let me just get a nice piece here wow it is steaming hot very warm very fresh and uh, i'm just gonna shove this in my mouth mm. carbonara mm. Mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> so we do make carbonara at home a lot, Phil and I. This one is definitely more creamier than the ones uh, we make, and it's really good. You didn't say better though. I didn't, I didn't say better, but it's very, very good. You can just taste the freshness of the ingredients and it's just, it's hard to not love pasta, right? <laughs> I don't, I don't yeah. know anyone who doesn't love pasta. It's just so good. Quick carbonara try for me. What I notice immediately, is they give you a fork and a knife instead of a fork and a spoon, which is the way how a lot of Germans eat it. I wonder if this is the wrong way then with the spoon. And uh, oh yeah, that's you true. spit it in a spoon, yeah. right? But wow, this looks very eggy. What do you think? So different, creamy, very cheesy. And I thought when it came out, 
Well, this looks like a fairly small portion, but I think it's one of these very heavy dishes where you actually don't really want a bigger portion. By the way, this was 14 euros for the carbonara. The pizza also 14 euros. So for Roman uh, prices, this is probably fairly standard, I would assume. But yeah, definitely interesting and pretty good. To be honest, we left Rome slightly disappointed, feeling that we didn't really had a real pizza experience in Italy, and with the tourist masses, we would rather visit Florence or Napoli in the future. However, there was one amazing dessert left to rescue the day, and not much later, we stumbled upon Italy's aforementioned number one dessert. Next stop, dessert, of course. We're in the streets of Rome and it's a very tight, narrow alleyway and we had to get a classic tiramisu. And there's one place that's called Two Sizes and they say the best tiramisu in town. And tiramisu, of course, the classic Roman dessert. Classic Italian, Italian dessert. dessert. I got the classic version. Which has uh, cream and then a little small biscuit cake and then more cream and then coffee poured onto it and then covered with cacao on top. And I have a pistachio version. We got two smalls and they're 250 each, so not a bad deal. Yeah, they come in these little plastic cups. Yeah, and they're all homemade apparently. Mm. Wow. It also looks green. Mm. 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 I think I just love the pistachio options in Europe. It's like my favorite. And there's so many, especially near the Mediterranean, with like Greece, Italy, Spain, there's a lot of pistachio options. It's really creamy, but um, very strongly flavored. There's a bit of this biscuit layer in that, so nice mm -hmm. when you grab a spoon of the pistachio. Well, this one I have a nice so crunch of the pistachios on top, which is awesome. I'll try the original. Ooh, both nice. It takes a moment till the pistachio yeah. taste kicks in. I think I like the pistachio a little more. Yours is very creamy for tiramisu, yeah. which is a normally creamy dish, but there's not as much cake layer there. But it's it's really, really good. And they had more versions, right? They had yeah. a peanut butter version. Peanut butter, which I haven't seen before. And they have a strawberry version. There was Sicilian cannoli there too, so. Mm. What I like so far about the food experience in Italy in general, they make it very easy and quick to get it from the street. Yeah, there's a lot of street food options, a lot of grab and go. It seems like a lot of Italians do this quick stop for like a snack or a quick espresso or something and this fits right in there. Very nice. I'm gonna finish this. It's amazing. All right, so that was our Italian food tour here in Rome and we made it back to Vatican City, which is just around and in front of us everywhere. Yeah, that was pretty interesting, pretty good, but pretty quick day in Rome. Yeah, let us know what your favorite Italian dish is and we want to eat it. <laughs> yeah, we want to eat everything. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Two of Phil's favorite trees, these long pointy ones and then these ones back here. What screams more? I'm a rich, retired gladiator more than having a couple of those in your garden.